Hello my loves and welcome back to my channel. Um, today is April 26th and this is your raw review and reaction. So I know I've been gone for a little bit but I'm back. So if you would kindly hit that subscribe button, that like button, leave a comment and I'll talk to you later. So off the bat, right? We have a tag team turned handicap match with Mace and T-Bag or T-Bar, whatever um, Dijakovic's new name is. I wish he would really go back to Dijakovic, but um, against Braun Strowman and Drew McIntyre. Somewhere in the universe, there is a fuck to give because now that Drew is not champion, it just seems like he's wandering. And the last thing you want to do is get involved with Braun Strowman because when has he done anything relevant? I'll wait. I hate to say it, but it's like maybe they should put the mask back on because at least it gave them some character. I mean, now they kind of look like these two um creator wrestlers that you would make on like 2k like without mustafa ali well thank god he got away from them but without him they're useless and it's like we can do without you guys i guess right i mean dajakovic is pretty good i haven't seen anything of um Dio madden but again nobody cares about any of these people and poor drew is just being dragged so Okay, so now it's a tag team match because Drew decided that when he was finished with his croissant and catering, he was like, oh shit, like I was supposed to go help Braun. So then he ran out at the last minute and here we have a tag match. Um, I know I missed like maybe a week or two, but when did Braun Strowman shave his head? I mean, the back of his head just looked just looks old now like ew i mean it's really minor and why is dajakovic and um madden why are they wearing face paint like i miss a week and then this whole company goes to further bullshit so there you go folks don't miss a week of bullshit or you'll be lost the fact that drew has to make these two i mean i really hate to speak like about Dijakovic because I really really do like him he was really good in NXT but it's like when you're on the main roster it's kind of like fuck what you did in NXT it doesn't matter but it's like Drew has to now make these two essential like jobbers because that's exactly what Retribution was but now he has to make them look good and I'm like you guys I would just be like Vince you guys don't pay me enough like I'm good on that, but that's just me. That's just me. I'm being petty. I said this years ago, like before Drew left, but the first time, but when they zoom in to the Future Shock DDT, it takes away from the fact that it's essentially not the most effective move anyway, because Drew's arm is, I mean, obviously he's saving, you know, his opponent, but like when you zoom in, it does not look like it's it, i don't even know it just looks like the opponent is like how am i supposed to sell this if you're essentially saving me so much and look they lost by count out because drew ran into braun during his steam roll i don't give a fuck drew should not be losing he should not be anywhere near braun Strowman. just ugh. so we go from one tag match to another one why is Damien Priest tagging with the New Day? Why is Damien Priest anywhere near the New Day? Like, coming off that WrestleMania win with Bad Bunny and how great he looked leading up to WrestleMania, he should be challenging for a title or in a program with somebody that's going to make him look good. I mean, The Miz is obviously... The Miz and Morrison did what they had to do at WrestleMania, and I don't think a lot of people give them enough credit for that. But at the same time, they lost, so move to the back of the line, and Damian Priest goes to the front of the line, which means he should be, you know, put in more of a high-profile feud. Now, I just don't want him to get mixed up in that 
comedian, just that terrible humor that the New Day is just sticking to. And it's like, it's hard to believe that Kofi was ever the former world heavyweight champion, like given what he goes back to, you know what I mean? And that's not his fault, but you, you know what I'm saying? I just want Damian Priest to be protected as much as possible. They've done right by him so far, but I just don't want them to ruin him because he is such a star. And if you don't see a star when you look at him, you're a fucking idiot. Sorry, but it's the truth. Now we have to suffer through yet another Drew and Braun match. Awesome said no one ever and you go from that to the miz and john morrison and this mohawk thing he has going on like somebody tell him no ma'am enough like let's let's not like and then you have elias and jackson Riker, and it's like are you begging me to go use the bathroom or go to the kitchen and get some food because that's exactly what i'm about to do if damian peace wasn't coming out they're lucky as much as I said I was going to pay attention to this match for Damian Priest alone, um, I'm kind of finding it very hard to pay attention. Um, I've been on my laptop, I have been scrolling on my phone, so it's like, I don't know what that says about maybe just my attention span, but or what that says about the fact that Damian Priest is such a star and he is forced to tag and be in a tag match with a bunch of fucking losers so I mean I hope this is not like a continued trend for him I hope next week he has a you know he's going somewhere but this is just bad besides the fact that Kofi Kingston is wrestling and once this fucking match is still on bro like I'm going to get something to eat. Besides the fact that this match was boring as fuck and not needed, why are Elias, Jackson, Riker, and The Miz getting so much fucking offense in? This should have been a one and done. Like, this match was a good 20 minutes. Like, I can't get that 20 minutes back. So I'm pissed off right now. So Sonya Deville just snuck Charlotte Flair into the building. I could just hear all the air being sucked out of the room out of out out of the thunderdome because it's like we can't go a week without seeing this bitch like oh my god i mean her nails look cute i'll say that much but it's like dude she was going off to get some dental work and posting all these pictures with andrade looking like she's having a great time if that was me i'm not fucking coming back I'm going to the beach with my man, fiance, whoever. Like, why are you here? I'm not even mad at Sonya Deville showing up on Raw. I mean, because she's fucking gorgeous to look at. But Charlotte, shoot me. The point of writing her off TV last week was so she could go get some dental work. If she didn't need that long of recovery, I mean, I don't know. I don't even know if she got it done. But let's just say, for argument's sake, she did. What was the point of writing her off? Like, you should have done your research and figured out, oh, this is how long she's going to need to recover. So why even attempt to write her off if you're going to bring the bitch back the next week? Like, this is the stupid-ass fucking writing that I'm talking about. This show is insufferable. And Vince's obsession with this semi-big-boobed, blonde woman lagging off her father's name i mean this shit is fucking annoying so charlotte gets reinstated because the referee apologized for not seeing rhea ripley interfere and then after all of that charlotte apologized and she's reinstated way to go for not keeping continuity at all i mean if the ref didn't see it, it basically didn't happen. How, I mean, how many years has that been the rule in this fuck shit company? I mean, even with the big screen in the back, the refs claim, well, I didn't see it, it didn't happen. Now, all of a sudden, we have to have a referee in the ring apologizing to Charlotte Flair for not seeing Rhea Ripley interfere. 
Oh, so she can get reinstated? Because we can't go a week without having Charlotte? What a big fuck you slap to all the fans. Like me. Normally I would applaud them for at least putting a stipulation on a match that nobody asked for. So at least it makes the match a little bit more important rather than just a throwaway. But Braun Strowman should be nowhere near. The title should be nowhere near Drew McIntyre. Should, no, should be nowhere near Bobby Lashley even though I could give a fuck who's around Bobby Lashley. I just don't want the title around his waist. But now we get to something i am interested in sheamus and his open challenge um pete dunn put out a little you know teaser and although a girl can hope we know he's not coming out but um i hope it's somebody we care about i'm actually with sheamus on this one what the fuck is humberto carrillo think he's doing like last week you didn't even wait till the bell rang. Well, Seamus didn't wait till the bell rang because he wanted to get the shit over with. I'm not mad at it. Now you come out again. Like, who gets their ass beat one time and then goes back for more? Like, father, may I? Like, no. Like, we couldn't find anyone else for Seamus. Humberto, he gets in the gym. He grows a little beard and he thinks that we're supposed to take him seriously or at least the writers do. Like... I'm insulted and I just feel like this is the running gag for tonight. If that wasn't bad enough, we had Humberto beating up Sheamus and then we go right to Bobby Lashley. I like MVP. I think he's a great talker. I think he will be a great asset to anyone or would be a great asset to anyone. But not even MVP and his great mic skills can make me give a fuck about Bobby Lashley. Let alone like him. I mean, I understand he's worked and I think everyone deserves a fair shot at the title. And everyone deserves a fair run, especially as a black man. I'm a black woman, so I'm all for it. But Bobby Lashley, aside from all of that, I don't like you. And I, and I cannot stand him as champion. Um... I know that's not the popular opinion, but it's mine. I mean, he's been built really, really well. I will give them props for that. But other than that, mm. Okay, so before I ignore everything that's about to happen with Bobby Lashley, um, I just wanted to address Rhea Ripley. Um, last week, her, I think it was last week or maybe the week before, her promo was very, very bad. Like, you can tell she was reading off cue cards. This week, a little bit better. Um, still smug. Still very, it's all about me. Which it should be. You are the future. But I think, not even I think. I can't understand, like, why she's, why she's not coming off natural. Like, it doesn't feel like she's comfortable enough. And... I really hope that that's not the case because I really want her to excel. Like, this is her time. This is Bianca Bel Belair's time. But I just can't help but feel like, I don't know if she's nervous. Because in interviews, she doesn't come off that way. She comes off completely, like, in, you know, in charge. But on the main roster, I'm just feeling like it's not going the right way. And I don't really know what it is. I just hope that they fix it and she fixes it and it all comes together for her because i fucking love rhea ripley so i definitely went to the kitchen and missed everything that bobby lashley said and i'm okay with that i just wanted to like make that a point like again i know he has his fans and i know there's no denying that he's been pushed to the moon and pushed cor correctly but i am just not a fan of bobby lashley um, as far as who he could feud with to take the title off him, I don't see anybody legit. So, needless to say, he might have that title for a while. So, do I have anything to say about the women's tag team division or lack thereof? Nope. Not at all. The fact that Shayna Baszler has to even be associated with Nia Jax, I feel really bad for her. And I hope that they split them apart very soon because it really just 
makes the, t the roof of my mouth itch that Shayna has to even deal with Naya and this whole Naya and and whatever her little butler French whatever he is nobody cares about that either oh and Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke nobody cares about them either Natalia Tamina nope so Randy Orton and Matt Riddle had a tag team match and they won comments nope moving on um I just have a question now that Alexa Bliss is not with the fiend do we really care about her anymore I mean I really hate to be that guy but I think it's a valid question I don't and let me preface this by saying it has nothing to do with the fact that I'm not an Alexa Bliss fan because as a non-fan I was still able to appreciate and respect the work that she did with the fiend it was probably the best work she's ever done but now it's like she doesn't have the fiend anymore so she doesn't have him to you know bounce off of so it's like do we really care about her and lily i think the doll's name is because again i just don't care like every time i see her i'm just like where is the fiend and i hate that that sounds like an indictment against her because it's not but it's really just the dead honest truth i really only care about the fiend so i wrote this on twitter another fucking tag match why like we have had nothing but fucking tag matches tonight and we still have Braun Strowman and Drew Sonya said we have to unfortunately see Charlotte in a match so it's like what the fuck why so many tag matches <sighs> Lana and Naomi are still a thing poor Naomi Anybody who has to be stuck with Lana, I feel so bad for them. <sighs> is it me or are they really trying to drive home the fact that Rhea Ripley is a heel by tagging her with Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler? I mean, way to really, really, you know, dig it in. You know, so subtle. But Jesus, I mean... Rhea as a heel, I mean, she's great either way. It's just, eh. we'll see where it goes, I guess. So the last thing I remember seeing was Naya falling in water, Shayna getting water thrown on her. And the only thing I could think of was, are Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke heels because they're booked like they are. And right now, I mean, besides the fact that I don't give a fuck, it's just, isn't it supposed to be the other way around? It's like, now you have them essentially bullying Naya and making fun of Naya. And I'm like, isn't Naya supposed to be the heel? Because it's kind of looking like they're about to do a switch. So I finished bathing my child. You might see her pop up somewhere behind me, of course. But I finished bathing her and what do I come back into my room? charlotte flair at what time is it right now 10 33 i don't want to see charlotte on my tv this is essentially a squash match she's gonna beat the shit out of mandy rose and what is this supposed to prove because it has nothing to do with the suspension or lack thereof suspension she's not really feuding with Rhea unless she is because Rhea was acting like she really didn't give a fuck about Charlotte. Not that I'm mad at her for doing that because I don't either. But you see what I'm saying? The two, they're not even interacting with each other at this point. So are they really feuding? Um, raise your hand if you noticed that there was no AJ Styles on this show. Not only do we have to suffer through more than one appearance by Drew McIntyre and Braun Strowman, not to mention more than one segment with charlotte flair where the fuck is aj and omas like aren't they the tag team champions i fully expected aj to come out with omas with the titles talk shit like he is known to do and 
at least have a match. I mean, there's really no male tag team division at all either. But you get my drift. Like, where the fuck is AJ Styles? So they're really adding Braun Strowman to the match, making it a triple threat. Again, something that nobody asks for. But you know what? In the end, it'll keep Drew strong because he won't be the one taking the pin, obviously. And I'm pretty sure Bobby Lashley's gonna retain. So I guess Braun can be the fall guy, right? Other than that, there's no reason for him to have been added to the match. And that's really all I have to say about that because I'm not excited about this triple threat match as it is now. I wasn't excited before. So yeah. That's it. <laughs> I wish I had more to say, but I don't. So my loves, um, this was my reaction and review to Monday Night Raw. Essentially a show that has become entertainment for 10 year olds and not for 30 something year old adults like myself. So um, I really don't have any thoughts to say this show was bad. You know, and JD from NY's infamous words, the show fucking sucks. So, um, anyway, <laughs> if you enjoyed my reaction and my review, please hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment. I always respond. I love you, and I will see you in my next one.